Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Uh, happy Africa Day. And thank you very much for coming to our webinar today on the hieroglyphics and Coptic uh, scripts as African innovations by Dr. Sambo. Uh, without much further ado, I'll invite uh, our DVC, uh, Professor Nkantlam Kize to welcome us to the webinar. Thank you very much, uh, Program Director, Professor Ubani, to our special guest and keynote speaker, Dr. Sambu, members of the university community, international and uh, national guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored today to welcome you to the first College of Humanities lecture series. And again, a very special welcome to our distinguished guest, uh, Dr. Sambu. And I also want to welcome in a special way, uh, our partners, the National Institute for the Humanities and Social Sciences, represented here by Professor Sarah Mosuetsa. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in marking Africa Day today, we thought that uh, we would kickstart our lecture series on a very, very important subject that also talked to decolonization. Maybe let me share with you briefly uh, how I came to know Dr. Sambu. I came to know him uh, through my doctoral uh, student, uh, Dr. Makut Amos was studying uh, the Kalenjin, particularly the Nandi people in Kenya. And he kept on referring to Asi, Asi. And based on uh, what I understand uh, on the history of ancient Egypt, particularly their understanding of the doctrine of death, resurrection and afterlife, I thought probably this is referring to the legend of uh, Isis and Osiris. So I started Googling and there the name uh, Dr. Sambo came up. And then I thought it would be very, very marvelous for us to bring uh, uh, Dr. Sambo here to the University of Kwazulu Natal so that he can assist us to unpack uh, uh, the history of the African continent pre-colonially and the post the colonial encounter. Uh, in doing this, we are following in the tradition that was established by none other than Chag Under Diop, as well as Diofela Obenga, who were very, very articulate in this, especially after the UNESCO General Congress uh, uh, in African uh, ancient history, and that to understand the history of the continent and to position the continent as a significant role player in knowledge production we have to engage with ancient Egypt and we have also to engage with the ancient manuscripts. So I'm very, very excited today that we have uh, Dr. Samu here to educate us on this particular uh, subject. And we are planning to use this as a launch pad to introduce the study of Egyptology at the University of Kwazulu Natal. So in those very, very warm words, a very, very happy Africa Day. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Mkiz Kavazela uh, for the warm welcome to our audience this afternoon. Uh, let me now invite uh, uh, Professor Musueta to give us a uh, words of support to our first uh, lecture in the College of Humanities. Over to you, Prof. Uh, Professor Ngubani, thank you so much, Nyabonga Gakulu, for uh, just leading us on, on this important uh, day and, and, and for this important discussion. Um, thank you, Professor Mkize. As, as always, you've, you've always spearheaded uh, interesting discussions, but also led the humanities and, 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 and social sciences 
in, in South Africa. And I'm glad that you are also pushing us to also have a, con a conversation that is con continental in, 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 at least in the form that we're going to have it uh, today. To, to Dr. Sambo, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to learning from you. Uh, it's always interesting to read your work. And, and today it's, it's only an honor and a privilege that we share this virtual uh, a, a space with you, that I share this virtual space with you. Uh, and <clears throat> I have enormous respect for you and the work that you have have done over 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 the years and and it is also I'm hoping that for everyone who's joining us this is a rare privilege to to listen and learn from 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 Dr. Sambo so uh, um, I am grateful for the University of of, of, of of KZN for arranging such a such a dialogue an important dialogue today is Africa day today we are proudly uh, Af Af African and as 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 uh, another another renowned leader scholar thinker a leader in the continent who, who once said to us that we are not African because we are born in Africa. We are uh, African because Africa is born in us. And that's uh, uh, Kwame Nkrumah. I think everyone, uh, uh, Nkrumah and everyone knows his, his work very well in, in spearheading what we thought then was uh, what we think today is new, which is the, 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 the story around decoloniality, coloniality. And we know our forebearers had thought about these, these, these big questions. And Dr. Sambo uh, uh, takes on that, that work for many years. And, and I'm, I'm glad that he's, he's, he's with us today. The association, particularly for this lecture series, particularly for today's uh, um, a series uh, celebrating uh, Africa Day, is of, uh, of of interest to us as, as 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 NIHSS. NIHSS was formed. The National Institute for the Humanities and Social Sciences was established by Dr. Nzimande in 2013 to do exactly what we are going to do today. To to talk to each other, to listen to each other, to learn and take our histories uh, uh, forward. I think there are particular things that I, 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 I find interesting of what we, we might want to be talking about uh, today and some of the themes are, are, are of interest directly to NI, NIHSS. And that's why we, we, we are here and I'm, I'm hoping everyone who's joining us is also going to, to hear the, the, some of the themes that we, we want to explore. The, the, the big theme around, around languages, our languages, our history around, around languages, the language for us is a tool of understanding who we are. If we understand our languages, uh, both historically and, 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 and currently, we will be able to tell our stories in, in new and, and, and diverse ways. And, and as we tell those stories, we are able to say, this is who we are. Instead of those stories being told by others about us, about our, 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 our languages. And indeed, uh, where, where else do we start uh, uh, other than the history of languages, these languages, in South Africa, Dr. Sambo, our languages don't start in, in 1652. They start even beyond, be, be, before, before that. They are appropriated for various reasons. We, we know that, and that is why language is not an apolitical uh, project. And indeed, as, as, as we, we want to explore the history of, of languages in, in, in Egypt and what you are asking us to do, that's a political project. And uh, it, it is a scholarship project, of course. It's a scholarly project, but steeped in, in history, in, in who we are as, 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 as Africans. History is important, and that's another thing that I want us to at least uh, from this lecture uh, uh, at least get get a sense of that if if we are able to tell our history, if we, we we know our history, we will know who we are. We will stand amongst our global counterparts, firmly rooted in who we are, and as as we know our history, and therefore we will arrive in those in those meetings, in those gatherings, fully confident of who 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 we are only if we know our history and the history of our languages is an important start of, of, of that. It is also important to also uh, uh, at least signal maybe three, three things. Who writes, who writes our history? Who tells our history? Who rewrites our history? And today, I think as, 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 as we, 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 we talk about a particular moment of, of, of our African history, the, la the, the, the history of our, our, our lang language is that we also are trying to reimagine that 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 history, but also to reimagine our future in new ways that 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 tells our story, that we we tell our story, that we are able to to move forward as an African uh, 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 continent. 
today's today's conversation therefore we fully support as nihs as we want it to continue even beyond this dr sambo i'm hoping that we're going to have further engagements even even beyond this in saying that this is a conversation about us for us yes amongst ourselves but with the global with the global uh, uh, world with that i want to thank you dr sambo for honoring the invitation and of course thank the university of, of kwazulu natal for leading for leading many discussions and quietly so while other universities often stand in some podiums talking about the great work that they do i'm glad that ukzn will silently silently celebrate africa day but also silently champion the humanities and social sciences our histories and languages and with that uh, dr Ngubani, thank you so much for for leading us today thank you uh, thank you very much, uh, Sarah, Professor of Sociology at the University of Witwatersrand and the current NHSS Chief Executive Officer. Thank you for the words of support. Uh, without much further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I will now make my, my comments and my remarks before I allow our main speaker to take the podium. The protocol has been observed. Uh, I think it is fitting that today's webinar coincide with the Africa Month celebration on the continent and the African diaspora. At the mighty civilization of Egypt is considered by many as one of the world's cradles of civilization. The ancient Egyptian belonged to the African branch of humanity, more especially the black uh, uh, community. The writing systems of the ancient Egyptians are of a major significance in the African history because language form part of human identity and heritage. In Africa alone, there are over 2000 languages spoken by various ethnic groups, which makes Africa very much a multilingual uh, continent. Ancient Egyptian writing is known as the system of hieroglyphics or sacred carvings. Some scholars claim that the concept of written word emerged in Mesopotamia and then moved to Egypt through trade, but Egyptian hieroglyphics are completely Egyptian in origin and there's no evidence of earlier writing systems prior to hieroglyphics. Of course, we know, colleagues, that hieroglyphics is a, a Greek word. So it means that uh, the Greeks were present in the, in the continent. Uh, the symbols or pictographs are believed to have come from God known as Thoth, who was believed to have emerged from the leaves of the sun called Ra at the dawn of time to represent the forces of order and chaos. As much as Egyptians writing was decorative, it was also sacred, recording the doings of gods and the kings. Early scripts identified individuals and places. Later, it became a tool of trade to provide information about goods and prices and interchange between Egyptians and other traders. Logograms, which are symbols representing words, and ideograms, which are signs, combined to convey the message, were, were developed. It is quite interesting how today's symbols, known as emojis, are used as a substitute for words. Uh, when you want to show love, you, you, you'll have an image of a heart uh, the phonogram, logogram, and ideogram are the basis of the hieroglyphic uh, script. As we join the rest of the continent, I wish to end my opening remarks by a quotation by Hale Selassie's uh, speech towards African unity, 1963, when the African Union was formed in May 25. He has this to say, Today, we look to the future calmly, confidently, and courageously. We look to the vision of an African not merely free, but united. In facing this new challenge, 
we take comfort and encouragement from the lessons of the past. We know that there are differences amongst us. Africans enjoy different cultures, distinctive values, special attributes, but we also know that unity can be and has been attained among men of the most desperate origins that differences of race, of religion, of culture, of tradition are no inseparable obstacle to the coming together of peoples. History teaches us that unity is strength and cautions us to submerge and overcome our difference in the quest of common goals, to strive with all our combined strength for the path to true African brotherhood and unity, unquote. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that uh, Dr. Sambo is anxious to take the floor and talk more of the symbols or pictures that represent single continent of or sound values and bilateral signs where one hieroglyph represents two consonants. Our South African alphabets are composed of consonants and vowels, whereas the Egyptian's alphabet has 24 hieroglyphic signs. He will take us through ancient history to the modern Coptic script, Copts being Egyptian Christians. The Coptic script is based on Egyptian dialect and uses the Greek alphabet with some addition from Demotic script. Colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, let us now welcome Dr. Sambu, who will address us on the topic hieroglyphics and Coptic scripts as African innovation. To, as a way of introduction, introducing uh, Dr. Sambu, he is the vice president and chief executive officer of the CAS Media Group. He obtained a BCom degree from the University of Nairobi and MCIPS in the United Kingdom. From 1990 to 1993, he studied Coptic language and script at the Coptic Center, Nairobi. In 1993, he conducted research in Israel and Egypt. He obtained a D-Lead at Phil in Ancient Near Eastern Studies at the University of South Africa. In 2002 to 2003, he completed his postdoctoral studies on Egypt at Humboldt University Berlin. Dr. Sambo is the author of The Kalijin People's Egypt Origin Legend Revisited, was Isis Assis, a study of comparative religion, and also the Misiri legend explored a linguistic inquiry into the Kalijin people's oral tradition of ancient Egyptian origin. Relying on his hieroglyphics and Coptic script that he had uh, learned in order to gain a deeper understanding of the subject. Dr. Sambu's doctoral thesis was ent entitled Assis and Assis, Eastern Africa's Kalijin people and their pharaonic origin legend, a comparative study. He's a regular commentator on TV and radio on African pride topics based on lessons from e Egyptology. Um, looking forward to the lecture by Dr. Sambo and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in inviting Dr. Sambo to take the floor. Over to you, Dr. Sambo, and good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Ngubane. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you all the colleagues I see with you there and all the um, South African people. I was in South Africa 21 years ago. Uh, I spent four and a half years there at the University of South Africa. So I feel at home um, talking to you people and talking with you and listening to you. Um, so what are we going to discuss today? We are trying to encourage our young men and women, and anybody who is ready to do it, to learn the old scripts and therefore access their own history, the African history, the African facts that they don't know. And the history is to show this one today, 
is largely about the writings, the scripts, hieroglyphics and Coptic scripts that will show us, that I'll use to show that they are African. Uh, Professor Nguban has, has told you there that um, Coptic characters are based on Greek. That's what everybody is told. <laughs> Actually, Greek is based mm -hmm. on Egyptian and Coptic. I'll show you that today. Uh, so I came to South Africa to learn this from the University of South Africa. Uh, I started here, did it at the University of South Africa, University of uh, Humboldt University, and did some research in Israel and in Egypt. Uh, but what I'm telling you today is the history of the scripts that they are ours, they're African, and that the, the West has got it from us through the Greeks and the Romans, like that. Uh, so I will demonstrate that and see if we can reinstate pride in us. Um, first of all, um, I know uh, the day after tomorrow, uh, the king of KwaZulu, Natal, will be coronated. And so this uh, is already king, but this show, this discussion is taking place in his reign. Why am I saying that? Why am I going to kings? Egyptology is mostly about pharaohs, pharaohs and kings of, of the past. So when something was done, a major thing was done, it was noted that it was done during the kingdom of so-and-so. So we -so. So saw the king's name, the king's name first. Um, so we'll, we'll practice that. We'll start with the king who will be coronated on 27th, and we still who is king now. King um, Misunza. I hope you're seeing all this. Um, so we start with that. I hope you all know his name begins with M, isn't it? But that M comes from ancient Egyptian. This bird. Okay, that is the beginning. Mm. And then the other name is I. The other letter is I. Actually, it's Egyptian. Give rise to that me. And then S. You know the S that we use it comes from ancient Egyptian. Me, Miss. Now we have Miss, and then U um, is a bird. This bird, young bird. Okay, so it's Miss U, and then Z. Z didn't come to us, but it used to be like that. Z. That's what I'm sorry. I lived in America a long time, so Z is in America is pronounced Z. So Z. Missy, uh, Missy, Missu, oh, Missu Zulu. And then this bird is U again. Okay. The same bird you see here. This is U. And then L is lion. I don't know how they, they share the lion. As a lion. Okay. And then this bird again, Lu, U. So the name of the king of our time is Misu Zulu. And it was put in what we call Katush. We're going to learn about Katushes like that. Everything happening. The name of the king. After that, uh, his picture uh, or the, of the king with the beard, it has a crown. This is Mr. Zulu. So this thing is taking place, taking part during the time of King Mr. Zulu. This is ancient Egyptian practice, this is what I'm doing now. Okay. 
Uh, a cartouche, I'll show you a better cartouche than mine here. Uh, if you can show um, the cartouche of um, the lady, the, the one who became, uh, yes, that is the one there you can see. Uh, that is the cartouche of the queen uh, Cleopatra. She was Greek and she came to Egypt. She ruled Egypt uh, when she was Greek, when Greece was ruling Egypt. It had ruled Egypt from the year 332 BC. And about near the time of Christ, she was the, the queen of Egypt and her name was written like that, Cleopatra. Um, you can see that, you can see the K is uh, that letter, Leo Patra, okay. Now I want to show you that this script is African, it's ours. Um, Professor Nguba, I told you Coptic is Greek, but we are mm -hmm. going to show you, I'm going to show you that it's not Greek. Actually, Greek is Coptic. Uh, now, <clears throat> back to our name for the king, for instance, we have seen that this is M, that M comes from that. It's known, but they never tell you. Uh, M comes from that, and I comes from that, S comes from that one, and um, C also comes from that one, let us see. Okay, can you see that? How about the Coptic language? Uh, Professor Ngubane told you there that Coptic comes from Greek. Uh, we'll show that Coptic is original, is African, and we should be proud of it. Okay. Coptic, uh, there's a very, very famous saying. There's a very famous saying. Okay, that's, <laughs> uh, my son is showing you some Coptic um, characters, uh, how some of them were created, uh, but you can show the, that's just a bit of it only. But I'll show you here, okay? Uh, practically from a very important saying in the Coptic uh, church. And that is um Shash of Nkesop Tina Ismo Epekran. Several times, uh, seven times a day, I um, um, celebrate your name, you are telling Jesus. And that's very important statement in Coptic. Shash of Nkesop Tina Ismo Epekran. Let's use that very important statement. So Shashuf is, is written, I'm writing now in Coptic, Shashuf, and then I'll show you the letters afterwards. Shashuf, We're going to use that very important statement to show the Africanness of this system. This one never it didn't go to the Greeks. It's shy. Uh, it didn't go to the Greeks, but it comes from ancient Egyptian in the form uh, of uh, shy. So it, it comes to Coptic, Shashuf, eh, is um, a bird it's from ancient Egyptian bird uh, like this. Okay, so it gives you your A, gives you your R, and finally gives you that A, this one here. So you see Shashuf, uh, you combine these two to make U, Shashuf. Coptic. And this one is your F. Today's F. Comes like that. And it's F. 
Okay. Um, we just go across like that. It's F. It comes from the ancient Egyptian snake. Where is that? Uh, ancient Egyptian snake. Uh, that's the one which gives you gave you F. Ancient snake, Egyptian snake. Like that. This is what gives you your F uh, in the West. This you can find in uh, good writing uh, from people who have uh, studied white and black. Most of the, those who are not uh, interested in African, real African history will try to hide that. But those who are good enough are showing it. Okay, so you've seen Shashov, N, in case of N comes from uh, this Egyptian, ancient Egyptian N, that's ancient Egyptian N. And you know where that's where it comes from? It's Nyanja Lake. I don't know, I think in South Africa, that name should be for Lake also. Uh, but in uh, Kenyan local languages, uh, we still have it. Nyanja is Lake. That gives you N. K E. Uh, K went to to Greek also, but it comes from Coptic. Uh, A, C, you have seen that. Um, actually, O is W. So, and then Pi. The, the letter which you think is Greek Pi is from Coptic, P. And from ancient Egyptian, P. Okay, this is what you have. It's called Pi. It's Coptic. T, T naismo, T is also from Coptic. N, I've told you, A, I've told you. M, is this M? Although in Coptic it's, it's written like this. I hope you're seeing that. But it's this bird from old, the bird called old. Okay. Uh, if a crown. You can see pi, z, k. Uh, what we call p comes as r, r, that's a crown. P, this, that looks like p is, in Coptic is r, and Greek too. So the Greeks took that intact. Okay, that is demonstrating using uh, that kind of writing. Now, I want to show that these people were African. And anybody can ask a question in between, but just I'll hear, let me hear some noise and I'll let you speak. Uh, let's see the pictures of those things we have said. You have seen, can, can we show the, the Coptic characters and Greek and Coptic, or, or all the Egyptian and Coptic? Uh, on the screen, yes, you can see that. You can see the A and that B, what, what, that is the, um, the script or the alphabet of ancient Egyptian Coptic, and which has been borrowed by Greek and taken to the West. Um, there's a very famous uh, Coptic um, bishop who went to Russia and took our writing to Russia. It's called Abba, Abba is father, Abba Krilo. And that's what they call Krilik, whatever he took there, they are calling it Krilik, and it's modern, uh, Russian, they, they, they use it as modern. Okay, I want to show you these Africans that did this. Um, let's start with uh, those, the Africans, uh, I mean, the people of the world as the Greeks saw them. Uh, I hope to be able to show you that. Uh, the people of the world as the Greeks showed them. Yes, that one there. I hope it's showing to everybody. Um, you can see those people, uh, those people on the screen there. Um, this is just back to before a thousand years to Jesus, it's much older. This, 
it was taken by the Yamas, and this uh, drawing, this picture from one of the tombs, um, and it's the Yamas knew what it was, and they have it. Uh, so you can see the first person there. This is the Asian as the Egyptian, so the Asian. The second one is African south of the Sahara, as they saw them and themselves. And then that one there is Asian. They said Asian, it's written there, Asian, that's what they said. And the first one to the left is an Egyptian himself, the way he saw himself. That is what it is, okay? And we've had problems. The people who accessed these things were not us, and they tried to take it away from us, uh, take away the truth uh, from us, and um, claimed that Egypt was not African, it was white, I don't know how, and the Egyptians came from heaven, dropped down, and went completely, they are not there anymore, and they were not African, but of course it's obvious. The Egyptians themselves said they were African, and scholars, even white scholars who are um, genuine, who are honest, have owned to this. If you can show the picture of one great uh, white man um, who, who owned to that, um, you, you have the, the white outer. The, yes, okay. Yes, good, that one. Um, if you go to my books, you can see I almost worship this man. He said the truth, he said that the Egyptians um, were the same as the Africans down south. And he said the close ones near the lake, the lakes, which is here in East Africa, and even maybe south. Um, there was a mixture of Africans all the years. Um, it wasn't like they were so separate. They were the same all the time. There was that habit, for instance, in Egypt, uh, circumcision, they circumcised the uh, men, uh, young uh, boys were circumcised to become men in Egypt from thousands of years ago. Also here in East Africa, it was also happening uh, until 200 years ago in KwaZulu Natal, when uh, King Shaka discontinued it, he wanted his soldiers to come to, to the field sooner. Um, so he, he abolished the condition. But I hear uh, King uh, Zuelitini, uh, Goodwill said Zuelitini returned it. And I don't, know how, I don't know how far it has gone, but it was there. So how did it get all the way there? A very difficult thing like circumcision. Of course, it continued and stopped in uh, Osa, Osa, among the Osa in, of, of, of South Africa. So that tells you something. And then, uh, how do we know they were Africans? We want to know physically, were they Africans? Let me show you something. How do you recognize an African? Let me show, let me show me the one uh, with, um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, okay, prognathic issue, the issue of prognathism. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, you can see the, the look of an African. The first one, of course, I'm sure all the guys who are, all the people who are watching now can see that those are, uh, they can see who is the African, who is not the African. Now the African has a long head back to front here. It's called Dolicocephali, is Dolicocephali. The other one is not, that is a white man. Uh, the African has uh, this lower part of the face to the front, they call it prognathism. And for a long time, the Africans who learned about these things uh, in recent times um, being referred to as being dolicocephalic by the whites and being prognathic as something shameful, something not to be, but I've used the same 
to prove that the Egyptians were Africans. So can you see the, the long, um, the, the long part, the long lower part of the face, that is the prognathism. Uh, let's see it in an Egyptian. Let's see from Tutankhamun. The young man, Tutankhamun, the king, Tutankhamun. I heard you guys in the conference, uh, in the background discussing about uh, Tutankhamun. You can see the young Tutankhamun, the young King Tut, the young one, yes. Ah, uh, that is King Tut. The picture of King Tut of the time. I mean, uh, a monument, a uh, physical thing. Can you see that? I'll put some lines for you to, to help you do it. Um, the red line going from the middle of the forehead down perpendicularly, down 90 degrees. That one, you can see it cuts most of its face to the right. A white person uh, showing that cannot, um, I'm sure we have <laughs> some Western person. Uh, we have, uh, let's say Alexander the Great. Yes, Alexander the Great, the one who conquered. He didn't quite conquer Egypt. He conquered Egypt and freed Egyptians from the conquest of the, and the rule of the uh, Persians. So Alexander the Great, you can see the red line. It doesn't cut much of his face out. And I'll, I'll show you the blue line. You can see a blue line in front of the red, red line. You draw the line from the chin and it touches the lips. If you touch the lips, you can see how much of his face is cut off or you can see part of the nose is cut off because it's like that. Let's go to the young king, the young king again, King Tutankhamun, back to the same one with the, the lines. Yes. Um, Look at the blue line from the chin, touches the, the lips and goes. It misses the north, the, the nose. Okay, that is common African look. Uh, uh, Western people, white people do not look like that, but the African is like that. You can go back to the pictures of the, um, the, the people, the world people as the Egyptians saw them. You can go back to, to it and see. Um, now you can see the dolicocephaly, you can see the prognathism. There it is. It is something racist. This subject is racist and we should not be talking about it, but they did talk about it and tried to rob us of our own past, our own pride in the past, and we are coming back to use it at this time. Okay, some may be Asian. For instance, there's an Asian uh, gentleman um, who was in Egypt, actually. Uh, the Egyptians said he was foreigner and they drew him, they, they have this carving of them, of him like that. You can see that. So, so there's a difference, there's no confusion. All right. Okay. Uh, I went to the Egyptian Museum in 1993. Is that 30 years ago? Almost 30 years ago. Um, and took I took a picture of um, a pharaoh. Okay, that was myself. Uh, all right. <laughs> that was myself uh, at the um, near the the pyramids. But first, let's look at uh, Meremta. Meremta, that is Tutankhamun, we'll show you afterwards. We, we see Meremta, the king who chased the, or who followed in history the Israelis mm -hmm. when they were running away. The show before that, him, Meremta, before that one. Um, he's the one who was king at the time of the Exodus. Um, okay, yeah, probably, I don't know why Meremta is not. Um, okay, that's Meremta. 
okay? It's a stone in the Museum of Egypt and in Cairo. As usual, they have broken the nose. They break the nose so that you don't know, it doesn't look African. You see that? Uh, it's very, very dishonest. Um, but that is what you see. Uh, so I saw this. Uh, I, I brought the picture and I was in the University of South Africa. I got a friend who was an artist around in that place, a very famous artist uh, called Mashiang Waku. And he was doing all the drawings at the University there of South Africa. I told uh, Mashiang Waku, look at the nose of this guy, it's broken. How can you reinstate at least picture wise? How can you reinstate it? Um, so that we know what he, what he looks like. He looked like really. And use the base of the nose as it is, honestly, and just re restore it. And Mashiang Waku uh, got that for me. Uh, he put the nose, uh, he corrected, he uh, did that, plus the chin, everything. And that is what really Meremta, the one of Exodus, the king who followed the Israelis, um, as he ran away from Egypt, that's the man. He didn't die the way they say he died in the, in the sea, uh, because he ended up writing to say that he had um, that on hieroglyphic. Um, I don't see that picture here, but he had that on the hieroglyphic uh, where he said, he followed these people and they ran away like that and he destroyed most of them or something. So he, he lived until after that. That is the history that is written by him and it's on a stela, one of these stelas. Okay, uh, so let's go back to Tutankhamun. Now we saw him as a baby. Now we'll see him as king, grown up. Uh, to the, come on, that's him facing you. And this is in the Museum of Egypt. He didn't break his nose. He's a, there's an Englishman who came and broke into the tomb of Tutankhamun. And this is the what he produced, what, what he got in the tomb. And there was it was recently, 1920 something, recently in these times. And everybody was there, so he couldn't break the nose or anything. He produced his face uh, as you, yeah, I mean, the picture. He produced a monument, it's a carving, ancient carving, um, 3,000 years and more old. So, another picture of Jason Kamun, another monument that um, a carving, a very good carving of San Kamun that is kept in the Museum of Cairo. Okay, that is his face uh, in gold. All right, you can see the ears are perforated the way they do in, they used to do in East Africa here. You can see the lips, but where's the picture? There's a picture of him standing uh, with um, some stuff in hand. So we have uh, Tutankhamun. Okay, uh, I see we are missing. Okay, he has it that way. Uh, there's a fuller one. So when uh, the, the Englishman who dug into the grave, uh, the tomb of Tutankhamun in the twenties, when he, he came and he started the digging with the Egyptians, they reached the, the gate of the tomb itself. And the gate inside, the gate was guarded by those two pictures, those two, they're not really pictures, they were real carvings of Tutankhamun. The, the king himself was buried inside there. And that's the, those are the sentinels you saw, about 1922, 23. And, oh my God, he was shocked. Oh, he wasn't shocked, but he didn't want to show it. Do you know what? He closed the place and went away for three or four years. And they allowed him to do that. So you, 
and he came back and he came back he opened and saw those other very uh, honest features of Tutankhamun. Okay, uh, so uh, we want to talk about uh, prognathism again. Let's look at Queen T. Queen T is a picture I took in Germany when I was in Germany. I was, I did um, under the supervision of Humboldt University in Berlin. Um, uh, I and my class studied uh, a lot of monuments at the Egyptian Museum of, of uh, Berlin. There's a Berlin Museum of Egyptian. So one of the uh, people there is Queen T from Egypt. You can see, you can see what I mean by prognathism. You can see her there, honestly, as she was. I was talking about Tutankhamun. Let's see Tutankhamun's face when this guy dug him out. Um, we got his face uh, pictured honestly. And I'll show you that face. That's him. So that is his mummy, his real body. Okay, you can see him. And you can see also his coffin, his coffin. The same body in the coffin. Okay. Okay, that's the coffin. Uh, him in the coffin. That's his real body. So if that is his real body, where did you get, if he wasn't black, where did he get a blackness? Okay. Well, do you lose? Uh, do you gain, if you're white, do you gain melanin when you're buried and, and, and your mom is like that? No, they don't gain, they remain white. This is very, very dark man. Okay, so let me show you something I'm very proud of. African, what the African game, I've shown you they are Africans now. Of course, what is more famous than the pyramid? the pyramids. And these pyramids were started in south, the south areas of Sudan of today. That's where those pyramids were started. That's me with the um, Sphinx, what do you call um, of Sphinx of um, Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh Chiffring, um, of that, and that what is behind there is this um, pyramid. So you can see the, 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 the face of that man and the prognathism, very clear, African prognathism. We had a uh, pyramid, the pyramid of Cheops, uh, the biggest pyramid in the world and the largest single building in the world until today. That is the pyramid of uh, Cheops, fourth dynasty, about 2,700 2, years before Christ, which is today, 4,700 years, almost 5,000 years old. They were able to build such a complicated thing, sophisticated, huge, it's about 230 meters on the sides and about 100, almost 150 meters tall, it used to be. So the, the people of Cairo, recent population of Cairo, they came and replaced, um, removed the, the covering. It used to have some very smooth covering uh, of limestone. They took that and built things in Cairo town. Otherwise, it was very shiny, um, very smooth. So I want to end the lecture. Let's see if there's something I did to, is it one and a half an hour? Are oh, there are questions? Okay. All right. All right. I'm following after the footsteps of one African great person. I heard you mention him during uh, some discussion before the show. Cheikh Anta Diop. Uh, Cheikh Anta Diop um, inspired me a lot into this thing. So I just want to show you uh, the picture of Cheikh Anta Diop trying to 
to create equipment to, to be able to ascertain some things from ancient Egypt, ages and things like that. That is uh, smart. Good. I hear there are questions. Yes, okay. Uh, from Innocent Abubakar, he says, uh, will you please share the recorded webinar? It is serious, important. Um, I would like to watch it 100 times. <laughs> Thank you for this. It is a best gift for 25th May. Thank you very much. That is um, somebody innocent of Bakar. So I don't know whether I think he's South Africa or I don't know. Eh? Um, then there is Jere, Jeremiah Latena. Do Egyptians still use hieroglyphics? As Chinese still use Hanzi Chinese? No, the Egyptians don't use hieroglyphics. Uh, they use Arabic script mostly. Um, for other writings, they use what you call Western, but which you have seen today is ours taken by the West without acknowledging. Okay, and then there is uh, Zbu Molo, Moloi. Thank you once again. I would like to know how can we get this taught in every school on the African continent and made mainstream history outside of the schooling system. Okay, I hope uh, the professors in, uh, we have professors, we have Professor Ngubane, Professor Anshlashila Mpize, Professor Mososa of Vita Strand, those ones who are from Zulu, uh, KwaZulu Natal, uh, will, um, I think they'll listen to you and answer you after this. I hope they have had that uh, question. Is that all for the questions? Okay, so any questions directly or whatever, um, that should end the lecture. Yes, we will invite people to raise their hands if they have any questions. Okay. There is a Isi Zulu uh, interpretation. If you want to ask in, in your own language, you can raise the question. Then Njabulu will interpret it into English. OK. Thank you very much. It seems that we don't have live questions. Uh, and I just want to congratulate you, Dr. Sambu for a clear presentation that- uh, oh, I ended up. Oh, okay, go, go, go ahead, go ahead. Now, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, I've just gone through the Q&A and there is a question as to what happened to the ancient Egyptians. Uh, <laughs> did they miraculously uh, disappear? And uh, I'd like to also maybe put a follow up uh, on the question of the descendants of the ancient Egyptians. Are they still on the continent? Where are they? How can we identify them? Uh, because this is a very important issue. For example, if one is studying, uh, uh, for argument's sake, uh, the Bible, our first encounter as children with the Egyptians is through the Bible. And we believe this is something happening, or the story or the narrative is unfolding probably on another continent. That's how we are taught. So I think it's a genuine question. Yeah, I'm asking it rhetorically. Where are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians? Thank you. That's a uh, very interesting question. Eh? <laughs> okay, thank Go you. Ahead, Dr. Sambu. Yes, um, Professor Mkiz. The ancient Egyptians were the rest of Africans, the us. Some are in the south, others remained in Egypt, and some got mixed up, and they, they, they now have a dual, like they are Arab or half Arab, half African. Uh, that is what happened. They, they lost, we lost them because after being colonized, they, they give up. 
almost totally, I virtually totally, and began talking, speaking these other languages of the conquerors, um, Arabic, and, but Coptic was kept uh, for the church. Um, so if you are in Coptic, if you go to Coptic church, they'll do all these things in Arabic. They'll speak in Arabic, everything about <coughs> the church, the Bible, everything about this. And then there's a holy moment when everybody speaks in Coptic. That's a holy moment. Like in um, Catholic, if you go to a Catholic church, they speak English or whatever language, local language. When they want to feel very holy, they speak Latin. So in the Coptic church, they speak Coptic when they want to feel very holy. So that language was retained in that way. Not many people know it well, um, but when your students begin studying, they'll use it to dig back and realize a lot of things. It's easier than hieroglyphic, but they must still learn hieroglyphic. Yes, and uh, where they go, I've, I've answered that, um, Professor. I know, unfortunately, well, the Bible is good, but all right, one of our problems is there. I hope it saves the people more than <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, I see. I see Mukonde, Mukonde, Mukondeli, and uh, Dion <coughs> asking questions. Uh, okay, yeah, Dion. go ahead. Uh, thank you, thank you, colleagues, and uh, uh, thank you, Doctor. Um, you know, I'm I'm very uh, ashamed that I don't know about you. <laughs> you know, because myself, I'm very passionate about African history. You know. And I've engaged with some of the materials of uh, Sheikh Hunter Diop and the likes of John Henry Clark and all the, the Pan-Africanists of old, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm happy to learn about you, though, and the work that you're doing. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm really looking forward to engaging with some of the other findings that you've come across. Um, you know, I also had that question about where the, the, the ancient, the black ancient Egyptians went. Uh, but also I'm, I'm wondering, because you mentioned something about um, Coptic uh, and that actually Coptic is not a derivative of Greek, but rather Greek is a derivative of Coptic. Can you maybe share some insight uh, on it? Keep losing. Uh, Dr. Sambu. Uh, Dion, can you come with your, 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 your question so that uh, he can respond to both questions? I think. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> this is Dion Governor, Chief Editor of The Rising Sun and uh, Metamedia. I'm also a researcher, though not related to this field. Dr. Sambu, thank you very much for this presentation. However, have you ever examined the influences of Vedic Sanskrit and Indo-Aryan languages? Because it shares, it shares a platform of symbolism as well as some of the wording. For example, Ganga as presented on the Egyptian hieroglyphic is also a uh, ancient and modern English word meaning mother and often attributed to something life-giving in, in, in India's case, the Ganges River deriving from Ganga. Have you also considered the influence of those languages which also predates um, Egyptian hieroglyphics? Thank you. Thank you. I don't know about predate. Um, about 5,000, 6,000 years, as we see. But they were older than that. They were already perfect 5,000, 6,000 years ago. So they, they date even earlier. Um, I know there has been a problem. There's a problem uh, of people uh, associating with African ancientness or African beginnings. If they are if we share a lot or some something with uh, some the whole world was mixed 
And somebody asked, who are the Africans? I mean, where are the Egyptians in, in the South? All of us, um, there's circumcision, which I mentioned there, um, which was, um, which is known as Egyptian, is all over Africa, of the South, that is uh, as a culture. You go to Osaland, it's still practiced as it was. You go to Zululand, it was stopped 200 years ago. So those are very important African things that we share with those people. And uh, about those are, I've seen ancient Egyptian ones dating very, very uh, far into the past. That is 5,000, 2,000 years of BAD. Yes. Um, hello, Professor Mishrashla. I think I've lost him. There was a question from Dion Governor, uh, Doc. I'm, I'm, that was the one who was talking. Um, that was Dion Governor. We are we we have the Mukonde Leli. Laozi. Yeah, Muk yeah. Mukonde Leli. That was Dion uh, that asked that question. Did you get my question, Doc? Uh, who is that? I didn't get your question. Did you ask on, on air? Yes. Um, I was asking about the, the relation between, because you mentioned that uh, the assumption was that the Coptic was a derivative of Greek, but you corrected it and said no. Actually, Greek was, was a derivative of Coptic. So I just wanted more insight on that in terms of uh, what was the process uh, that happened with that, and how did that happen? The Egyptians, um, ancient Egyptians, uh, before the Greeks, the Greeks still woke up after the three or three thirty something AD, you know BC. That's when the Greeks came and became very strong. But before that, you go back to six hundred. They were not. The Egyptians were ruling them. Uh, and that's when they got this script. Everybody, um, in, in, in intelligentsia, proper intelligentsia, we know this. We know how, how it started. And I think uh, um, uh, I'm not seeing his name anymore. Um, I've just told how it was derived, how the Greek letters, which we say are now like Coptic and uh, like you're saying, it came from this, even pi, I showed you pi, the letter pi, which is P, which is ancient Egyptian, this thing here, in Coptic it became this. The Greeks took this. Uh, I think from today, we'll try to, now that we've had this, to cross the truth in the next public lecture and have a lot of new converts. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. Sambo. I also have a question. Uh, the manuscripts of Timbuktu, are they written in hieroglyphics or Coptic? writing system? Uh, of that the age or of the, the age we are talking about or the, 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 the writing system that was used for the manuscript of Timbuktu. Ancient Egyptian, but we know it's the same thing. It's older than Coptic. I see. I have another question. Okay, go ahead. Sir. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it's uh, I do not know if this uh, function is working, whether you could see my hand raised. Nevertheless, it's John Gavinder again. 
Uh, Dr. Sambu, two, two, two questions. Number one, can I have access to your research or research methodology for the creation of an article for our newspapers and magazines? And the second question is, um, some of my colleagues from research institutions across uh, the universities across the world uh, developing and codifying ancient script, etc., have begun working on the Indo-Aryan and the Vedic Sanskrit codifying of the language to preserve it for future generations. As you know, everything old is going to crumble at one stage. What do you have to teach the future but codified and or virtual reality created images? Are you and your team involved or going to be involved in codifying for future preservation uh, a digital format or a virtual reality or an augmented reality so that that future generation would have something to look at if if the ancient scripts or uh, creations do get destroyed? Thank you. Okay. Um, I think um, Rakshika, who is one of the technical people, will help us uh, get you some of my writings, or even Professor Mukiza, who has read uh, my work, show you where he found And uh, yes, I suppose, I hope uh, the young people or anybody who is still strong, ideas as to what to do to dig back and how to retain it and how to help our people associate something that has been hidden from them. This has been hidden from us. Actually, it's a deceit that we have lived. And the spreading of these scripts will reveal to everybody uh, the truth. And I think that will help us be proud of ourselves, love our languages. I had to say that before. Our languages um, help us think better, help us create better, because it, it's inside. The language of this, that your first language, your mother tongue, is inside the middle of your brain. And any other language that you learn afterwards is smeared on the outer side of the brain. So are you going to try and learn deep things and advance further using this superficial language lying on top of your brain or the one inside your brain? That is something I've heard. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm afraid, uh, colleagues, this was our last question. And thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sambu. I will now call uh, Dr. Kukuletu Mazibugo, who's a senior lecturer uh, in, in the School of Arts, African Languages Lingu and Linguistics to respond to Dr. Sambo. Over to you, uh, Makat. Uh, good afternoon, uh, colleagues. Thanks, Prof. Ngubane, Prof. Mkize, Prof. Mosweta, uh, Prof. Motwane, uh, colleague, colleagues, guests, Ladies and gentlemen, San Bonani. San Bonani. Uh, uh, Dr. Sambu, Asante Sana. Asante. Wow, what an insightful lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, you will agree with me that the lecture was indeed thought-provoking, candid, and informative on hieroglyphics and Coptic scripts. This will leave an indelible mark in the entire continent as well as internationally. Such a relevant lecture in our first year of the international decade of indigenous languages as was proclaimed by UNESCO for the preservation revitalization and promotion of indigenous languages. This lecture today, when we celebrate Africa Day, is not only befitting the need to reinvest in indigenous knowledge, 
heritage, history, religion, and languages, but is also aligned to the vision and mission of the University of KwaZulu Natal uh, to be the premier university of African scholarship. The need to prioritize scholarship on the origins of African people cannot be overstated. It is the only way that the identity and integrity of Africa can be preserved. Not only will it be ground for the study of comparative linguistics, but that of religions that are a soul of a people and can be enriched immensely by cross-cultural heritages that are brought to the fore. This lecture further revealed how languages, culture, and religion are intertwined sides of the same coin that have to be further unpacked for the benefit of the continent. Dr. Sambu's lecture is thus a timeless wake up call to intensive discourse and action in our institution. Dr. Sambo, your lecture triggered new ideas that will benefit African scholarship and also planning for future. You gave us a new sense of pride as Africans. Looking at our past as well as shaping our future is more important than before. Uh, I have learned that Egyptians are Africans and we need to dig back for all the his hidden histories as well as truths. Finally, I would like to say, uh, Dr. Sambo, to make Funza Mengi Kutoka Kwako, we learned a lot from you. Once again, Asante Sana, Dr. Sambo Gyabonga. Asante Sana, uh, Dr. Mazibugo, and thank you very much for such an impactful response to our address this afternoon. And we do wish to congratulate Dr. Sambo on this uh, achievement. I think it, it is befitting that this was presented on the Africa Day uh, celebration, which we appreciate very much. But I'm not uh, going to do the vote of thanks, uh, uh, but there the is Professor Matuan, who's been assigned by our DVC to uh, convey or propose closing remarks and the vote of thanks to you. Karibu. Professor Mutuana is the Dean of Applied Human Sciences at the University of Kwazul Natal in the College of Humanities. Over to you, Prof. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Ngubani. Uh, colleagues, good afternoon. Sanbonani, Dimasia, Ri, Dumelang. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, it is indeed befitting that we should be holding such a lecture on Africa Day. Um, I think also it's, it's most appropriate for this kind of a lecture as the inaugural first College of Humanities lecture series. So Professor Mkize, you have done the college very proud in the university. Um, I believe that um, we are really gaining so much. Your visionary leadership is taking us um, to greater heights in contributing meaningfully to the debate and dialogue on decoloniality. Um, I think most people have already acknowledged um, the, 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 the nature of the um, lecture. Dr. Sambu, you've done an excellent job in reconnecting us to our roots. 
We thank you very much for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Thank you very much for opening some of our eyes to who we really are and, 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 and the language and, and the roots of our African languages and, and the role that they played in, in um, uh, contributing towards the global uh, history of, of the world. And so um, I just want to say thank you on behalf of uh, the College of Humanities on behalf of the University of KwaZulu-Natal. We really appreciate you whetting our appetite uh, on this subject. Um, we look forward to engaging even further with you on the subject. I believe this is not the first and I'm hoping that Prof Mkize has got even greater plans uh, for you uh, in, this, in this role, in this space. Um, let me also take this opportunity then to thank um, our DVC for organizing um, such a lecture. Uh, DVC, you probably must be satisfied because um, the attendance has been quite good. The response has been quite good. Um, I want to also thank you, uh, Professor Ngubani, for facilitating this webinar so ably. Um, for taking us through the proceedings of the day. Um, I want to also uh, send a special word of, of thanks to uh, Professor Musuedza for your words of support and encouragement uh, as a partner um, in this uh, process. I want to also acknowledge um, our uh, language interpreter, Jabulo Manyoni, for ensuring that this webinar is accessible to those that may not necessarily um, converse uh, fluently in, in English. I want to also uh, send a word of appreciation um, to Dr. Mazibuko. Thank you so much for your wonderful response and very appropriate response to this uh, lecture, to this webinar. Um, I want to also appreciate ICS for enabling this event to be live streamed, for connecting us all over. Um, I saw we've got people from Botswana, I saw we've got people from Kenya, UCT, um, some of the colleagues who acknowledged um, where they come from, we do appreciate uh, sharing with us so that we know the diversity of audience that we have with us. And so ICS, thank you so much for, for, for assisting us with live streaming this event. Uh, I want to also thank our PR team in the College of Humanities for really organizing this webinar and putting this event together to make sure that uh, it becomes a, a success. Lastly, but not least, the audience, we would not have had a successful webinar without your presence in our midst. Thank you so much for, for, for your interest and your uh, participation in the seminar. Um, I am then going to um, give our DVC the last word. Um, and thank you so much, colleagues, for, for all the hard work. Thank you. Over to you, uh, Professor Mkiza. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh... Professor Matwane, since you have uh, prompted me, uh, I will uh, say a few words uh, of thanks as well and uh, appreciation, but also hinting at the, the way forward in terms of where we can take this. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think it was uh, George Orwell in 1984 who said that he who controls the past also controls the future. I think this lecture marks a significant milestones towards uh, the continent controlling its own past, understanding its contribution, ground contribution, not only to the humanities, but to a variety of branches of uh, the humanities, as well as natural sciences. So going forward, we want to have lecture series on the African contributions to the medical sciences, the African contributions to the mathematical and natural sciences, as well as the arts. All those things are hidden in our languages. If we were to understand our languages better, I, as Dr. Samuels indicated, all those things are 
hidden in our languages. Uh, for example, <laughs> here in KwaZulu Natal, we have got Emakosini and Egyptians. Emakosini means the Valley of Kings. And uh, that is how the Egyptians understood the, the place where the pharaohs were, were laid, the Valley of Kings. So ladies and gentlemen, it is about high time that we engage in a deeper and penetrating analysis through comparative uh, linguistics as a child under the uh, indicated as well as the Ophila Obenga to understand we have to engage meaningfully with the curriculum and reconstruct some of the evidence that was deliberately, I repeat, deliberately obliterated where that is feasible. We need to look at our maps and see the writings that are embedded in there because there are writings that are embedded in our sleeping maps uh, the, the, the sun and the, uh, the sun uh, picture writings, what are the links with the ancient Egyptians? And ultimately, uh, you are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians, and we can demonstrate that uh, without equivocation. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Sambu, thank you very much. This has been a groundbreaking lecture. Uh, we are looking forward to uh, 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 inviting you to be an honorary member of the University of KwaZulu Natal so that we can now begin the very, very critical work of developing the discipline of Egyptology as a discipline of studies at the University of KwaZulu Natal, as well as Arabic studies. That's another uh, component that we are going to be working on. And uh, we have already started working on a uh, Swahili because this issue of comparative linguistics is essential in understanding our past. With those words, thank you, thank you, thank you, Nyabonga Asanteni, uh, to all the attendees and to our uh, PR and the program manager. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nkize and other colleagues who have made this day a successful day. And thank you to Dr. Sambu. Uh, I thought the uh, professor would say we must organize a tour to Egypt <laughs> just to go and see these pyramids. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending. Uh, we are two minutes towards closure and Rashika will close uh, the webinar. Thank you for attending everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Asante. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Asante sana. Asante sana. Good, good, good. Thank you. Tatenda. Hello? Tatenda. This is uh, Shona. Shona, yes. You like? Napenda. Yeah. Okay. Asante. Very Asante, Professor. Very <laughs> So Rashika, we are on your hands now. The, the webinar is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, colleagues. Thank you.